Hello and welcome to this continuing live code series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. We're working on a website for the nonprofit organization Western Friend. And we're porting the website from the Drupal live site over to Django Wagtail. <clears throat> There's quite a number of features we're going to be going through in this series and today we're focusing on the community section. In previous episodes, we've gotten a general purpose community page set up here with a stream field where we can edit content, add sections, for example, a card that says welcome. It has some rich text here, and an image. Let's go ahead and upload one while we're here. I believe the click upload. We will right align it and publish the page. View it live. So what this allows the uh, editor to dynamically construct the page, and most of the content on this page has now been moved into this body field, which is a stream field including arbitrary headers. Oh, I thought I was going to see, <clears throat> Let's see yep, excuse me. So we got headers <clears throat> and card rows that can be <clears throat> added where you pick arbitrary pages and link to them. Currently the second row of this section is hard coded though and this is what we're going to work on today. If I edit it again, you'll see that below the Western Front directory heading, which is editable, <clears throat> is a what we call a card row, <clears throat> and that row can consist of one or more cards that have a page link and a header. The community resources section, which is basically this row more or less, uh, essentially allows us to change some texts and publish that that will show up in the UI. But I'd like to get a little bit more sort of abstracted. Uh, for example, say the editor wanted to change this row and put it above the row above there or put a header in between here. It's very hard if I would have to hard code these, uh, the structure or the headings into the template. So I'm trying to get away from that. <clears throat> so when we look at these, the code here, um, we essentially have this resources collection. So if I go to community models, the community page, which is this, with our stream field. If I scroll down, we got a community resource index page, which is essentially this page. And I haven't added any resources, so none are listing here. Let's see, friends everywhere. I thought I had added, uh, I reset the contents here. But anyway, um, it looks for a URL argument and uses that URL argument here inside of a kind of query set which gets returned to the page. Uh, that worked, that got the page to work that is, uh, but it's inflexible. The route is sort of hard coded and it doesn't make it easy for me to kind of um, I have to wire it into the template. So we're gonna to try to make this a little bit more generic. So I think the way to approach this is gonna be similar to the way we've done other sites. We'll have an online worship index and an uh, online directories index. Those will actually be Wagtail page, page instances where there's one allowed. So let's go ahead and try to get this moving along. I'm wondering if I should make a uh, make another app, but it looks like we're going to be in the community app, so let's just go ahead and keep it there. So community resource can still, you know, exist as it is. I was even thinking that these might be good just as their own collection type. Uh, but for now, it's a unified collection with two types of resources. That you can choose from. 
So if we hop down here, we'll call this, <clears throat> I can make the assumption here, you know, that these are going to be the options because they're, those are hard coded. There's so many ways I could go about this, but essentially the idea is that I'll make a an online worship index, uh, online directories index. On those index, so let's try. They'll inherit from page. And again, as being there's so many ways of going about this, this is subject to change, but I'm just trying to make this uh, row editing more flexible for all of these. In fact, I could start at uh, this Quaker Organizations Index. Let me think here for a second. And the first thing we'll see here is that this, uh, it's not a standard a wagtail page. I was reading a tutorial earlier and I uh, saw how to change, how to get this little wagtail. Um, and I haven't, I haven't created that content. It's a little wagtail icon back, something like wagtail user bar or something like that. I don't remember what tutorial that was. I was researching this idea on the train. So let's go from left to right, Quaker organizations. <clears throat> have Quaker organizations right now are defined in the contact type, so we can go over here. It'll be the same process though. So they're just called organizations. We will create, and I had to, uh, when I refactored this code, I couldn't quite get rid of the old contact model. I'm not sure how to get rid of that. An empty model that should be just deleted now. Okay, so we got a class. Inheriting for page. <clears throat> this will have, um, it'll be a stream field more or less. It'll have a title since it inherits from page. But uh, the idea we get this stream field. We want max count one because it's an index page. And at some point I want to try to uh, <clears throat> combine all of these index pages into one generic. I don't know if that'll be possible, but they're really fulfilling the same purpose and just hard coded to one instance which works for now all right <coughs> so the stream field I'm just going to grab from the computer page and we'll clean it up but for consistency I think we should be able to add <coughs> on an organization index page you know just treat it like a regular page headings paragraph images but not card and card row. I believe I'm gonna take those out. And I have to import stream field. Probably a couple other imports missing here, blocks. What was that under Wagtail Core Fields? All right, so Stream Field is just right there. Oh, got the whole thing. <coughs> just a little bit more room. <coughs> now blocks come out of the Wagtail Core as well. From Wagtail Core. Import blocks. Are any other red squiggles? One thing I liked is I used to, was using PyCharm for a while, and when you get those red squiggles, it'll actually do dynamic imports for you. I just imported that. You can right click on it and say add import or something. <coughs> That's a pretty useful feature. Uh, image chooser block. Let's go ahead and just not have the image chooser for now. 
this page is organization index page is pretty much just a uh, a list of organizations it looks like this we just might want to add a subheader or some text so we'll get those in there <clears throat> All right, really quickly my throat's getting kind of dry I don't know if I've got a cold or what it is I'm just gonna have some chai tea Let's make this migration and the idea I came up with on the train today, I was trying to think like, how could I not hard code the query into the page, but was, uh, I thought I could create a block that actually would have the query uh, built in, but could be moved around and placed among inside of the stream field if I create a custom block that says organizations list and it could have like pagination feature. Uh, that way, I don't have to hard code the pagination count and all that stuff into the UI or the placement into the template. Um, and the editor can have a little bit of control over the display, and we might even come up with some other features like switching between a card grid and a list view or something like that. I don't know exactly, but uh, trying to figure out how to blend these. How to wear only one hat at a time, as the wagtail, Zeno Wagtail says, to know what hat you're wearing. So I'm wearing the developer hat right now. Uh, but give the editor some more control over the layout. I believe that'll be valuable. Anyway, let's get this migrated in. Hey, Kionis. Anything else? Uh, not too concerned about the template uh, I should set the page and sub page types so it's going to go into the uh, community page because they are community quick organizations so that'll go there and nothing underneath it I suppose I suppose I might change my mind that quick or like organizations could be the huh. that might be cool to change the hierarchy there keeps our content a little bit more organized but it also affects the URL structures. Mm, I'll go with it. That means I'm gonna go double check before doing this. I will have to delete this. Content, I believe. Okay, we're not running. Uh, you know, I think I was reading about e-commerce. Wagtail well, e-commerce. Trying to get two steps ahead. We are going to have to. And I was reading a Snipcart article. Uh, we're going to have to add a bookstore. That's one of the main features in a subscription thing. I have, I'm not getting too much copyright content here on stream. Um, aside from this whole article. But anyway, uh, they had this, the template, the wagtail user bar. This is what I was remembering. If I create a custom template that's not inheriting from the wagtail page, I believe this is how to get the little wagtail icon back, wagtail user bar. I'll come back to that. All right. Right, because we have this bookstore here and it's got flat rate shipping, you know, quantities and shopping carts, some filters. I don't even know how to begin here. I was looking at Oscar Commerce. It looks quite sophisticated, but has a lot of things going on. So anyway, that's for another day. All right, where are we here? Running these migrations. Ooh, 
Yes, I did. I don't care where I spell wrong. Invalid parent page type soon. Community. Doesn't have an organization index page. Well, I just am creating it now. Contact models, organization index page, hint app, community. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Contact us. Underneath the community page, I should now be able to add two types. Let me double check here. Contact organization index page. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to do it both places. Now that I look at this, though, I believe. Um, Consistent here. I'll leave it alone for now. But I need to hop over to community and add the organization index page as a sub uh, sub page. Add the community page. Community page. Sub page type. You have to do these uh, from both angles to keep the sort of content hierarchy in check. And now I have to think for a second here because this is going to clash. Not it's not a page to view might not be registered. So if I come back over here to community views. And URLs. Kind of moving back away from the Django hard-coded views. I need to. If I'm not going to be using URLs, just to clean it up from the main settings. URLs, that is. And I'll come back here and clean up the commented code in a minute. So now we should have, can't find that view. But if I publish this, I believe it should take its place and I just need to create an index for it now. Wagtail is another cool one. Well, yeah, another cool thing about Wagtail is it does a lot of the wiring for you. So let's grab this. And essentially this contact organization index page is the same. Let's see where we're in. Community. 
I need to move it to the contact module. What do I have, what do I have here? Contact templates. Contact. That. But I can take the template out of this community templates. Quick organizations. It's more or less the same. Uh, except we'll be using a stream field here. So most of this is actually going to not be the same. Grab it. If anything, just for the page structure and get a couple of errors. So, quick organizations rendering. <coughs> Let's take a look here. What we did, what we got. So, I want to hold on to this because I'm going to convert this now to a block. Or, 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 or. Yes, I did. I did want to convert it to a block. Either that or I could just put it in the page context and hard code it in. Which might be a stepping stone. I think here for just a second. I'm just gonna delete that so I remember to come back to it of these files and whatnot we have a stream field by default by definition here so I mean I can add ah okay I gotta display it yeah, of course so just to refresh my memory I have to find out how to display a stream field I think it's just stream field pa panel but uh, what do we got what's Another time, I'm going to come through and just delete all these files that don't have anything in them, anything meaningful in them. Yeah, it's just stream field. And for now, I'm just calling it uh, body. default the you can override the content panels and the sort of class definitions as you can tell and the page model has some content panels such as the uh, title panel so I'll just inherit those get the body refresh this the title's already there because it's a page and stream field panels undefined Field panel. It's sort of like edit handlers, I believe. Huh. Not a complete panels. I think I can deprecate this. Go back to admin editor. I think we're uh, not using the auto complete handle panel anymore. Well, it would have red squiggles. So let's grab this. it up here to, up to admin edit handlers field panel field panel and now it's happy imports are important yes yeah, so now we have this dynamic thing I can add bunches of headings all in a row paragraphs of text them add the stuff above and below them or add headings inside of it's interesting I 
and publish. Now, when I refresh the page, it's not going to have that because we haven't displayed it into the template. So, what we'll take a look at, we'll, most of this we'll have to delete because we don't want hard coded templates, uh, headings, and things like that. But what we can do is look at the community page template and see this is what we're moving away from hard coding and we're moving it into a much more concise and expressive way. Actually, first the page title as well. We need to put that in there. So grab all of this, in fact. Organization index page. Should really just not need any of this. I don't want to delete it right away. Um, The reason I'm keeping it around is I want the markup for just one more moment. It's not really working anyway, so it's not hurting it to be there. For some reason, it's indented quite a bit. I'm copying and pasting it. So now if I refresh this, basically uh, these default um, stream field elements will render their own templates. Now we're going to make a block, and that block is going to take all this markup, and it's going to have a context, just like templates can have context uh, that you can override, blocks can also. So let's go to the documentation for this. Uh, stream field. .1 docs. I need to update this project to 2.5.1. I think it was down there towards the bottom. So to migrate. Get form context. Hmm, that's for the edit form. I hope I didn't misinterpret that. Get okay, form context is being able to pass context into the block. That'll be unfortunate. There we are. Now let's just get context. It follows the regular. Whew, I was getting a little bit nervous every second. So what we want here. I'll have to create a block. I guess I'll make a struct block. Has a couple of fields. I don't know what the fields would be though. It's essentially just going to be an organization's list. Later it will have maybe pagination, so I guess that could be uh, left for a future exercise. So, and I'll do this. I think it's a similar pattern with the events calendar. Food block blocks. We're gonna go over. This is a specific block in the contact model. So I believe I'll define that in the contact app.
And this is a, what is the uh, context again? Struct block. It's kind of behaving like a, the J, uh, sorry the Drupal views in that it's giving us minor query params. For configuration to the UI, but not much else. Not sure what all these do. I'll we'll just. Go with what they say. Put the context for the parent. Self. down. I've already got a lot of files modified. It's going to be a little bit tricky to do these commits, but oh well, we'll get there. So now we're going to add the, I guess, the organizations. Equals Excellent tutorial series, Learn Wagtail, that you should, if possible, just try to define your uh, your template explicitly here. Just makes it easier for new developers checking out your code and for yourself to remember. Organizations block. I'm not sure if I need to uh, mm. go one degree nested there. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I believe you have to migrate these. No, no, blocks shouldn't need a migration. Then wagtail integrate. Uh, sort of indexes them somehow. So end if, end if, right. So we'll need any special wagtail. Doesn't look like it. What else do we need? Essentially just to wire this into the uh, Model. So basically, with this page body, we'll have a series of blocks. And in one case, we wanted to just dis display the headers as header level two, which may or may not be on, uh, maybe it may not be necessary, but in any case, that's what it is. Since the template markup was so slim, it could just go right there and 
body, but otherwise you would just include blocks and the blocks having their own template will render in that place. So I can close URLs, blocks, community page, close this for now because I'm getting too much information on the screen. I need to import it. So I have these WF blocks that are in the main app down here under streams, but this exists in the same uh, app. So let's go ahead uh, right down here. Organizations block. instance of this. I wonder if there's a uh, parameter I can pass into the stream th field that allows me to specify how many instances of each of the block types for one. And I also need to just uh, give it an icon. But let's see if this is working real quick. Um, from contact models import organization contact blocks no, just do absolute this is we're in the contact app. In any case, I'm doing. Seems to be right here. Let's try it again. It's right there. It's doing autocomplete and everything. Uh, this is probably the issue. Circular import. Circular. I don't want to have to do that though. Let me see if there's something wrong with the caching a little bit right there. Yeah, it's a circular import. All right, whatever. I don't know how to do this more elegantly aside from uh, moving this to the blocks, moving this to the streams. Let's just do that.
don't know why I didn't have this issue before. Because I wasn't handling data context. Okay. case like this what I'll do to avoid a circular import I will import this into the context where it's used <laughs> Now we have a couple of them to test out. Oh. And I have that th thing still hard coded, so. some big changes so things are breaking just to be expected I'm on a branch so if everything goes awry we'll just roll it back I got 11 files and you know construction tape on them okay so then we have some context up just a little bit contact blocks can be deleted now contacts URLs can be deleted now whoa oh I just clicked on one. contact views can be deleted now it's hopping around a little bit Really, the admin can be deleted. That makes it just a little bit easier to see what I'm trying to see. I should leave the tests and figure those out at some point. All right, I don't want to get you carried off. Of. But what we're looking for. index page model so that's there I already did that I forgot about that I think this is it. Ooh, it didn't work though. Oh, it did. It did. It just doesn't have any fields. It's kind of halfway hidden behind this, so I need to display something there. 
they have this uh, sort of a static one. What's it called? Static block. Mm, no, that's not what that's for. But yeah, that makes sense. So if you have a, an address you want to put into a bunch of fields, I know. Hmm. Well, it's just not very obvious. that it's there it is but I would like to put some sort of a placeholder or something in there this is probably where you would need Let's see if this works. If I get to the point of doing pagination, then we can put a field there. Okay. Let's continue. Quick, organizations view live. Okay, good. Organizations block does not exist. So yeah, that's, just need to change that up here. I think that's where, where we put them. Yeah, now it's working. Great, so we have a little bit of editorial control and the template and then it renders text just straight out of the I didn't have to even modify the HTML so that worked um, where are we at yeah and it's a wagtail page so we have this nice little wagtail editor here I edit the page it's just so strange to have this empty it just totally disappears you can't even tell it's there hey what up the yellow pair one how are you doing? Welcome to the chat. Degree in computer science or mathematics? Huh. Well, what are you interested to do? What are you interested in building? And are they mutually exclusive? Can you get a major and minor combination? You know, major in computer science, minor in mathematics, or the other way around? Nothing about coding? Yeah, well, I mean, you should probably, if you're going to go down the computer science path, you're going to learn to code. And is that something you want to do? I mean, not everybody wants to code. And if you haven't, you know, kind of started learning to code, I think it would be a really big decision to go to choose a major in computer science, having never really naturally drawn, been drawing towards coding in other words like never picked it up out of your own curiosity and I'm not sure which one well pure mathematics is probably not going to earn you a lot of money but I would caution you against 
choosing solely based on the amount of money you would earn. Uh, because again, if you're not drawn to this out of like some innate um, will or curiosity, and you're gonna dedicate your life or a career, a significant portion of your life and time to this, uh, it's not gonna probably enliven you to say the least. I think you should give yourself some time to explore several subjects and find one that resonates with you, that enlivens you. And there's lots of uh, other diplomas that you can get and a lot of other careers you can make that you'll make a, a substantial living. I work as a programmer, yeah. I mean, you could go into, you know, psychology, uh, People in medical and health fields, they can make good livings. Um, you know, there's things like music therapy. Um, I think what's more important than not than the money is like um, that you find something that you're interested in doing. And yeah, I don't make six figures and I don't think that should be a goal or a reason to just choose a path in life because it's not guaranteed to be you know fulfilling just because you've reached some threshold of wealth a lot of people could be just as happy making five figures if not happier by virtue of choosing something that kind of speaks to them well yeah, you should start with something you like yeah and you know, computing is increasingly relevant in every almost every field that you could go into. So uh, there will be opportunities to do coding and see, you know, try it on in real contexts and see if it's something you enjoy doing. And if you like math, then it, like that sounds like where you'd want to spend your time. And they're inherently... Uh, connected. In fact, Hacker News, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, News.Y Combinator had some discussions today that were trending. Let's see if I can find this real quick. What were they even talking about? Set theory and the foundations of mathematics. There's uh, this article and the actual the discussion that might give you some insights into how deeply connected mathematics and computing and pro and hence programming are, how deeply related they are, and people's perspectives on that. Uh, it's not all positive comments, of course. There's people going back and forth. And maybe it gets a little bit, I don't want to speak for the character, usually Y Combinator, Hacker News, Discussions are, they go okay. They're not so fraught. What's another one that was interesting today? Relating, uh, what's his name? Alan Kay? Relating object orientation to biology. This one was trending. You might check this out also. If you want to start coding on your own, a good way to do it is, and the fact the way I did it is, um, well, twofold. One is finding um, a resource that'll take you through it, um, you know, giving you a roadmap, not just watching random YouTube videos, but something that has like, it breaks it down, it's sequential, it builds on itself, and you get quick feedback so you can try things out and get see how they work without waiting for like code to build and other kind of things that you don't really need to focus on so much uh, when you're just learning how to think computationally. And the second thing, and I can recommend you resources for the first one, but the second thing is to find uh, something to scratch an itch 
something that you're curious about, a problem that you want to solve in your own life or somebody's life. No, I don't have a, a CS degree. I don't think you need one to become a programmer, a developer. So people with CS degrees certainly uh, bring a lot of a wealth of knowledge and the pe my colleagues uh, who have CS degrees, you know, I rely uh, on them on a daily basis. So I certainly respect their decision and their um, sort of fortitude of getting that. Uh, but you don't need it. You can still make a way without it. So the scratching the itch though, if you, for example, have trouble uh, remembering appointments, you know, this problem is pretty well solved, but this is just hypothetical. You could start by making a small app or applet to remind you of your appointments. You know, pick a programming language, hopefully not JavaScript because then you'll just have a hundred choices right directly after that. But <laughs> something simple, no, I'm just giving hard, JavaScript a hard time. Uh, it's a good language. Uh, but yeah, and, and try just building something. Uh, particularly, you know, a really great way to get started is web development. That's the path I took. And you can, because it's really about uh, accessibility and, and getting something, some feedback right away, seeing your creation come to life. And web development is very tangible. You, you write some HTML and immediately that's represented on the page. You do just a little bit of JavaScript. You know, again, JavaScript is a great language. I think the community has some, some dysfunction. Uh, but I don't want to go off into that tangent. But um, yeah, do something that scratches your own itch. And that's how I really I learned to program. So specifically to point one, the Khan Academy has a lot of uh, educational resources, including a lot of math. If you want to continue bolstering your math, uh, start with their computer programming track. Work through this. I literally, uh, well, yeah, I literally learned a program here, Khan Academy. I had, you know, read a couple of books on, you know, Python programming, Ruby on Rails, and I'd done a couple of things. I was trying to uh, pick a path. You know, you got to kind of find a language that fits your style. I was first drawn to Python and uh, somehow got down the trail of Ruby on Rails. It was very popular at the time. And I think Ruby, uh, Ruby on Rails is certainly a solid and mature framework and you can build quite sophisticated things with it. But I've come back in recent years to Python. But again, it's find something that fits you and learn it in a way that's engaging, that gives you a roadmap to follow. And that that gives you practical, you know, easy wins along the way and just enough challenge. So Khan Academy is a great one. And if you want, if you can't find an issue of your own to scratch, you can say, uh, there's open source projects that are awesome for beginners. And you can find something cool here in all sorts of languages. You know, pick one of your choice, depending on what, uh, it's really hard to know where, where the path will take you, but uh, JavaScript is certainly a, a ubiquitous language. It's high, high demand. Uh, it's got a very turbulent ecosystem. You'll have to continually learn and reinvent things there, but it's good. Python is also very mature, very um, diverse ecosystem. But then there's things like systems programming languages, Rust, you can do a lot with Ruby and Rails. Yeah, check this out. See if there's something on this list uh, that might be uh, interesting to you. And just by way of example, let's hop down to Python. You know, there's a whole bunch of them. And you can typically, these are these are awesome for beginners because it's a curated list of, of projects that'll get you started. They're beginner friendly by design. So these aren't just random open source projects. They have uh, an ethos or pathos. Uh, 
uh, of helping new people learn to program and contribute code. So yeah, totally start there. That's, that's my advice. And you can also check out this first timers only for a few more resources. Yeah, and then the other thing I would say, you know, aside from, how, you know, what I've, I'll risk repeating is just finding a path uh, when you're learning the ropes, find a first learn, you know, in a sequential and building manner, then extend your knowledge into new territories and then transcend the framework by inventing your own path. But that process of blending, extending and transcending, that takes 10 years or more. And many people don't get there. But also just uh, have the sort of fortitude to power through problems and uh, learn and fail and not be afraid of failure because every, like this one I'm working on right now, huh, I might fail, I might not get this all to work. In fact, uh, what was it? Well, yeah, I actually just started working, so. But I had several, and parts of it aren't working right now. So I just got to kind of go with that and be comfortable with the fact that things are broken right now. But uh, I'll probably be able to fix this reverse. Yeah, because I just blasted out the URLs. So this is something left over in my template. Yeah, okay, I, I don't want to go too too long on that yellow pipe, uh, the yellow pair one. So I hope that's helpful. All right, so let's just take a look at this community template and see what I can unbreakify. Uh, so this got uh, destroyed, so I can delete that. And, and. The community page has some hard coded stuff. Um, and it's looking for a particular route that, do, that no longer exists. Okay, so this is where Since this page is defined at runtime, essentially, and dude, that's annoying. <laughs> I gotta fix this disappearing stuff. I could add like an intro text. Ah, but then that defeats the purpose of these up here. Okay, but anyway, so this page is defined at runtime. It's not in the database, it's not coded as a view with a URL. So my template can't really know it exists. I can't hard code that anymore. So what I have to do now is come back to this, um, this approach here where, where I have these blocks. And I just iterate over them. And basically, this is a card block. So if I go to pages, so first, let me just comment this out so my, my thing will render. Yeah, so these are just card blocks. Uh, it happens to be a row that renders one or more card blocks. And this is a row that's hard-coded in the template versus this row, which is in a block. When I edit this page, I can see that I added a card row here. This might be as simple as putting another card row in. Add another card row. I'll choose the page now. Community, what did I even do? I forget, I'm getting tired. Community resources, right? Welcome. Community, not resources. Quick organizations, thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. And, yeah, it's basically the same deal. Put 
some text there. Save the page. And I'll have to remove this now. Delete it. No, no, no. <laughs> Not delete that. Oh, goodness. I'm getting tired. Close a couple of these. Go back to the community page. Yes, yeah, so now we got our Quaker organizations block dynamically added through the UI, rendering this stuff. Good to go. I should get a commit. One more. Let's see if I've changed the, the uh, changed so many things. But since I'm going to see if I changed the community page model. I believe I did change the community model at least. Community models. If nothing, yeah, that was the community page model. So I'll save that for their commit, cleaning up those fields. Make sure I'm not missing any of these. Oh, I did, yeah. Yeah, it's been a full day at work and then I'm doing this live stream trying to have a uh, practical thing ready for tomorrow. We'll meet with the editor of this Western Friend magazine, so I'm fatigued, ready to go watch something and fall asleep. The Yellow Pear, if you're still there, hey, what kind of shows do you like to watch? Do you watch any uh, any series on, on uh, YouTube or anything that you find entertaining or educational? Oh, well, what do we do here? What do we do here? community these are all in the contact models what's going on with my community maybe this change just didn't need migration i think i just changed the page hierarchy really yeah but the contact models got a bunch of changes which i will squash someday
organization is blocked. Okay, we'll leave this uncommitted because it's commented right now. A little bit further down the road, though. Open that. Just close most of these real quick. Yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and delete this. Now these other two. I could leave the implementation as it is. have this as a choice. And for that, there was this override form context. Give form context. to build a form here. Uh, optionally, I could do a choice field, which is a little simpler, I believe. Choice block. And the choices would inherit from the model. These are community resources. Models, right here, resource type choices. So I would just import that, pop that there, put a nice little icon on it. So what I can do is just create a block called community resources card. Boom. Let's do it. Round out this stream. Try to wrap it up in the next oh, 15 minutes. I don't think that's going to happen though. Probably will take another half hour. I have non-caffeinated tea, so I'm not gonna demolish my sleep. I do that some nights, I'm up here at 2 a.m. Coding away. Oh boy. Ah, man. I hope that sounds not too ridiculous. One moment, I can mute it. All right, back. So, I'll be working at a slightly slow pace, but it's the same process here. Instead of organizations blocked, it's community resources blocked. Boom. Copy and pasty. There's just a lot of different uh, refinements. I can add an icon here, uh, try to get something to display an emptiness, the void that is a block without fields. Don't need to override the context for this one. How does this work? Choices. Oh, 
All right, just checking the chat. I do have my eye on the chat and peripheral view, so if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Uh, if you notice a bug, uh, one second. There we go. If you notice a bug or anything in the code and you'd like to uh, highlight it, you can just use the word line, the line number, and say a comment. And that should work. And I'll see your comment. Complete this line. Um, so I will comply. Yep, invalid syntax. I need to import my choices from the community models. These are resource type choices. Import consts from. Hmm. Well, that kind of. Did bummer. It's not even a const, it's just a variable, but I mean. Seriously. This knows is a list, like my IDE knows. It's right here. My IntelliSense says that should be okay. I just 
I get this to work. So phew, ridiculous. Ridiculous, I know. I'm gonna hard code it, duplicate it. Community resources block needs to inherit from. Needs a title field. And this. I just realized I'm going to also need the. Resources index page. Ah, this is a kludgy solution. I'm gonna have to rephrase this whole approach. This is not good. This is not good. Firstly, that's just mind boggling that I can't import that. Must be something. I just don't understand something beyond me why you can't import a variable from another file. I think the work here will be Maybe splitting these out into their own table, into their own entity type, and creating index pages for the two of them. Hmm. Well, this is an example where I might have to just uh, quit while I'm ahead right here, here. I've gotten a little bit of progress. I have to go off in the middle of it and uh, do a little more research. Think this problem through a little bit because I don't have an obvious. Answer here. Aside from this kind of kludgy idea of that. Um, so if I look at the uh, community page model. I select the community resource indexes page. But if I'm moving this to more generic card row, then this would be better to localize in the card itself. Super excited about the way I had to do this anyway. So, yeah, we're at an hour and a half. My intuition is telling me sleep on it. Um, but it that I might come up with a solution similar to what we did with the contacts where we split them out to their respective tables and just treat them each as their own type of thing. So we could have a submenu here, resources, and a table for each of the resource types. With proper fields, you know, there is slightly different treatment for these. Community resources. I think this is going to be the better way of doing it than creating proper index page, and it'll fit into a card block. But let's take a look. So online worship has a title, some description, times of worship, and a URL. So there's four four fields, and this could even be 
just a string field for now. All our rich text, it looks like there's a little bit of, no. That's not. Friends Everywhere, on the other hand, is just a title, URL, and description. So almost the same. Uh, but having, rather than having a generic community resource, just have a specific um, model for each of those. With corresponding index pages. And so two of these and not this routable one, which was good and it worked. Uh, but it's just kind of kludgy. All right, so that said, I'm just gonna roll back these changes. What did we do here? Anything, I, this I can, I can keep. That's a good change. We'll revert this. This didn't go anywhere anyway. So yeah, that's a good, it's an hour and a half, good stopping point. Um, not as neat and tidy as I'd like. I try to usually have a pull request complete by the end of a session, but you know, you can't always do that. Sometimes these take a couple of days and a little bit more sleep. So yeah, thanks for everybody who joined the chat today, joined the live stream. It's always nice to have people hanging out and I do like the AM ask me anything type uh, questions that we're getting here about Programming, computer science, mathematics, uh, you know, my career path and, and, and other, in the other person's career path, you know, how they, how they might emerge. We each have our own path in life. So it's kind of cool to hear other people's perspectives. The yellow payer one, I hope, I wish you luck on your uh, education and your path as uh, your career journey in your life journey and it'd be nice to see you around the chat and, and see how you're doing with uh, if you you know went down computer science or mathematics or both or some other field that involves a little bit of mathematics and computer science and applies them um, maybe like biology or, or other fields like that there's a lot of choices and I wouldn't wouldn't zero in on one just quite yet just give it a little bit of time yeah maybe you know, you don't have to feel so much pressure is the deal. Just kind of let yourself relax, let, let your life unfold a little bit. Okay, this has been another of the live coding series. Let's create a website from scratch with Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. We'll try to have another live coding series tomorrow to wrap this up before my meeting with with the uh, with Mary Klein, the editor of Western Frame Magazine, I want to kind of have this page in, in a good place. Uh, I believe, depending on how my, what well, how I feel after sleeping, I might have some kind of other insight. Uh, I believe tomorrow's session will be more just uh, kind of powering through creating these as separate uh, tables with index pages and page links in this card row. So that's fairly straightforward. I've done that before shouldn't be too fraught but in any case thanks again for attending have a great day or night wherever you're at and hope to see you around